the recent run up in XRP did get some attention in the market. It actually shows you, you like the three day chart is changing, it's becoming massively bullish. You go on a weekly chart and it shows you like, okay, there is a possibility that we may take off soon. We may actually get some blue off in terms of price, maybe 300%, 400% run up, maybe 250%. That means we may actually run up to $1.5 to $2 in XRP soon. And you go on to a higher time frame structure like a monthly to see if that can still be valid, right? Do you really see what the chart is showing you? Is the possibility showing you a correction or a move to the upside? Because when you go on the short term chart, maybe a 12 hour, maybe a four hour, it kind of gives you the narrative, okay, we went up, it's for sure, but now we are going to correct down. So where will the bottom be? And if we are bouncing off, where are we going next? Welcome to the Scientific Investor Family, where the normal retail guys get to learn how to become the next top 10 person of this world. Why we discuss everything from fundamentals towards technicals, we also have to understand the fundamentals, the news, the narrative also play a role in attracting new money into the market. Yes, so does the breakouts, the momentum. It kind of creates FOMO for sure. But while you understand like, okay, there are places in this earth where people are actually now looking more into these assets. One, it can be a meme coin, but it still is getting some attention. That matters. Because while we look at the entire picture here, it kind of gives us a narrative like, okay, there is some possibility like this, right? It, uh, maybe there is a rounded bottom formation coming in. And if that's true, now I'm not saying it's exactly going to be here or here. There is a possibility it's going to make a higher low. Why? When we go back, we kind of see like, okay, we have seen something like that, choppy days for sure, but it regularly made that higher low showing us, okay, something is changing, right? And that's important. But the concerning part here is the Bitcoin guy. Why? That particular individual right now is showing you, uh, whatever the other guy is doing, I'm fine, but I'm doing this. Right, that shows you like there is some level of concerns out there. Why? Because when you actually look at what Bitcoin is doing, last time it played the same game, this was the outcome. So if it's doing that again, I would be like, okay, let me actually look at what the trend line is looking like. Because if it's actually breaking that trend line, that won't look good. Why would I say that? If you actually plot this trend line here and go zoom into the day when the trend line broke to the downside here, you literally broke the moving average to the downside. So that's a daily chart and a 21 day moving average. And that day you broke the moving average to the downside. Um, what followed from there is increasingly more and more fear, which even turned into panic at one point. And that's where we got the V-shaped recovery. Now, while we go back to those days, I remember like, you know, the market was dropping, falling like crazy. And people were like, yeah, it's done. Bitcoin is dropping all the way back down. But what was the real thing happening in the market? It was a V-shaped recovery. Now, if you actually go back in time and look at the narrative, which we were talking about back then, we were literally talking about this possibility. What? A huge possibility of the market going back up in a V-shaped recovery pattern. And if you look back, that really played out. So it's valuable, I would say. Now, if you actually look at a lot of these assets right now, some of them, yeah, there are some concerns, but a lot of others are showing you like things are changing. We are slowly building on momentum. We are slowly getting more momentum, right? Because see, look at the three-day chart of XRP on a Heikinashi level. Where it's smoothened, but it gives you a better narrative of what's happening. Now, look at the RSI and then the MACD. RSI is breaking higher. Great, fine. Now we are looking at the MACD. 
it's on the positive territory, right? It's not on the negative side, it's on the positive side, and it's about to cross to the upside. That's bullish. Now, that's on a three-day chart, and you're above the moving average, which is, again, bullish. You may actually see some fluctuation. Now, you go back on the weekly chart to see, okay, if the three-day chart is showing me that, in order for that to be valid, it should also be valid on a higher time frame chart. That's why I'm on a weekly here. And on the weekly chart, it suggests you, okay, I'm above the moving average. I came down to the moving average. I bounced off of that level. One, two, look at the RSI. You go above the, uh, this particular level, which is like 60. Usually 50 is a neutral point, but from a long period of time, we have talked about this. 57, 58 is the neutral period for XRP because there is a lot of hype in this market. Like, we are going to $100,000. We are going to a $30,000 level, right? So we have a lot of people imagining that. So we do get more volatility. Now, while we look at that level, we broke above that, we consolidated, we came back down, making it feel like, ah, oh, that's a fake out, right? And then what happened? You reversed, you made a bottom at the moving average, you bounced back up. And that bounce was from 0.25 towards 0.75, if I remember that correctly. That actually gives you some confidence to say, okay, if we are doing that thing from 0.4, we are talking about 1.2 to 1.6 dollar. Because FOMO is going to come in. Right now, the MACD is on the positive territory. Instead of crossing to the downside, it is bouncing off. So you go back here, we came barely into the positive territory. Instead of actually crossing lower and going down, it bounced off. And that's where we got that heavy momentum. Now, yes, last time we got some consolidation there. However, this time the bounce shows are ah, foremost here in the market. So now we looked at the three day, we looked at the weekly. We are entering the monthly. The to be frank, I see like there is a possibility that one month of correction can still be there. The hidden number of painful days, maybe five days, maybe 15 days, whatever. It's still a possibility in the price side of things. Because when you reach the moving average, you kind of make a narrative like I'm going down. That's a trap and then goes up, right? And then here yeah, we haven't done that yet. So there is some kind of possibility, I would say 30% possibility. Why? Because when I'm using like three levels, one is the RSI, the MACD, and the price, uh, comparing it with the moving average, I'm like, mm, the RSI actually gives me an idea that on the monthly time horizon, when I broke this level of 40, 45, I come back down, retest that level and bounce off, and that's where it starts. So the retest was this drop on the monthly, great. However, this time, the retest was really short. People came in buying all these dips and it just started bouncing back. Now, yes, this month has just started. So you have a long way to go to see where this month closes, right? And that is where going on to a shorter time frame chart leads you. Where are we headed towards? Maybe next one day, maybe next three days, right? And that's where this 12 hour chart kind of shows you, yeah, I'm cooling off, right? I've just moved up. So some people would be shorting, some people would be taking profits and all. But when the price actually goes back down, that's where you get more attention, right? Think about it for yourself. If you want to buy this asset, load this up more, will you buy at the top after a run up or will you wait for this to cool off and then buy it before it bounces off to the new highs? Why? We are still inside this pattern. And in order for this pattern to be valid, we can still come back down, right? We can still come back down, maybe 0.47, maybe somewhere close to 0.465. You know, that range can still be valid. And that's going to be painful if you are actually leveraged and entering the market at the wrong time. If you're heavily leveraged, that's going to be really bad. Now, on a short-term scenario, you're looking at the moving average. When you're breaking through the moving average, you actually increase the momentum to the downside. So that does matter while you're looking at that. So... While you look at this, I would argue you also look for the Bitcoin movements because Bitcoin movement kind of, you know, pushes the market to the downside, right? Now we are watching that, okay, Bitcoin has slowly moved lower. 
below the close of the previous candle here. That was like 26,860. The daily close came in today with 26,800. So we broke that level. Great. So the daily actually shows you I'm breaking below the moving average. I'm turning bearish, at least for the short term duration. I'm correcting lower. So that's way if you are someone who's looking to buy, you're looking at the weekly chart like, mm, what does this show me? Literally, we have another two days to go, but we are already erasing the previous bullish week. We are already showing you that we can come back lower. That can be just a wick and you can go back up because historically we have seen these patterns actually gets valid when that happens at a support level. Your major support level is here. Your major resistance level happens to be here. So you're in between that, right? So once you reach somewhere close to 24, and then if we get the same pattern, I would say that's great. Why? While you look at the moving average here, you can see the way we are fluctuating. But remember in yesterday's video, we did talk about something, right? Something a little bit funnier, meaning when people actually come out and say, yeah, I'm looking at the downside, I'm looking at the downside, and at some point they're like, nah, now I'm not looking at that particular downside, I'm thinking like it's gonna go up. Yeah, psychology in the market is changing, which means now it's gonna drop because most of them are gonna think it's gonna go up. It's gonna drop, great. And that's going to be an opportunity for you if you are, you're already anticipating that and you are ready to buy those dips. That's where things get really interesting. And say, does all the assets move together? Does all the assets kind of blast off? No. You go look at the return rates for the last quarter and you'll see like the injective protocol has already doubled, right? The render has already doubled and it has corrected too, right? Now you look at others and XRP is there in one of the top performing assets, but it's not up to like 120, 150%, which means it has a long way to go to the upside. Why would I say that? Look at the last 30 days. Look at the last seven days. It's just starting to go back up. So it means for them, they reach the recent top and they're correcting lower or cooling off before they take off again. Great. But XRP has not yet completed that phase and that's where it gets a little bit messier, meaning for those who are in XRP, you need to understand the weekly is super bullish. You're going up, you're going up, you're going up, right? You actually took like one, two, three, four candles to the downside and by the three candles, you're already at the top, right? So we still have a couple of days for XRP to close this week and uh, we need to actually see like, okay, how that's going to turn out because historically speaking, there is a huge possibility that this particular pattern can also happen to be a rising to pattern, right? You actually give a two candle continuation pattern, which would actually look like this can happen very quickly. And if that's coming in the market, that means, you know, buy the dip guys would have hard time, right? We are looking for like, okay, if we get that hit and we cool down, that's a huge possibility. That's a great thing to watch. But then the market usually says like, ah, I'm going to the other direction. Now, one of my concern would be like, look at the level of RSI dropping. It may have to retest this. So even if it actually goes up right now and get rejected close to 0.53, I would be concerned because the RSI will show you a divergence at that point and Bitcoin is showing you to the downside. So there is some mixed approach in the market. So unless you break this level of 0.53 and close about that, short term being bullish is going to be really hard. Yes, medium to long term, this asset just changed the trajectory. It's going higher. It's moving rapidly to the upside with the monthly showing you that yes, the monthly close is extremely bullish. So you are just below the moving average. So we may actually get some kind of volatility before we actually burst through that moving average. And once we do, which we can do so easily because that's somewhere close like 0.55. And right now we are at 0.5. So bursting through that won't be a big deal. But for sure, the market in the first 100 shows, okay, XRP is one among those assets which can actually do well. Now look at XDC. It's been moving up. It just cooled off a little bit. But consider this. It still has some room. 
the market, the narrative, the news, everything is playing out. And then you actually go through all this to look like which of these assets are giving you opportunity and which of these are actually showing you I'm changing the momentum. Next couple of weeks, I'm looking for bullish attitude in the market. If you are actually looking for something like that for a lot of different assets in the market, you can look at the Patreon. The link is given in the description below. And if you are like, I'm completely in XRP, that's a positive thing because you believe in just one asset. But understand this is a market where there is a lot of different assets and you can find different segments like the AI, which is getting attention to be frank. And then you can look for the smart contracts, the payments, the metaverse, the gaming, you know, all of this are there. So having some level of diversification would be better within the crypto ecosystem because crypto is risky. If something goes wrong and news and narrative change, that's going to impact the price action for sure on the short term. And if your horizon is shorter, this is going to impact you severely. So if you are looking for, now I'm not worried about next couple of days and next couple of weeks. I'm here for long term. And I've already been waiting on this asset for some time and I understand that the market is reversing. And this is just going to be another leg where the market come to test the level of support before it actually move back up. And if you're that guy and you understand the market will, great, that's perfect. And guys, if you receive value for your time in this channel right now, please do hit that like button for me. That helps the channel a lot. I'll meet you guys on the next video. Bye for now.